Hello my friends and welcome back to the rabbit hole and welcome to my third and final video in the best skincare of 2022 series. And of all time, yes, timestamps and links are in the description box below, but apparently I just have to have an intro on every video. I really do feel I want to make sure to make something clear before I get into today's video. I was really thinking about how, you know, I've put out two videos already with more affordable products. I feel like it's easy to suspect that I'm saying, oh, I kind of settled for all of those products. These more expensive ones are really the best because you get what you pay for. I just want to say that's not actually true. When it comes to skincare products, the reality is the ingredients that are used in them are the same, whether you're talking about an inexpensive or an expensive product, and yet there are some differences. And I've said it a lot, I'll say it again, the main differences that I notice in high-end products is a difference in terms of texture, the way it sits on your skin, it's much more pleasant to apply and often better under makeup, and there can be a lot more going on in terms of the formulation itself, meaning you can get a bit more from some high-end products in one product but you could still duplicate the results with several products from The Ordinary, for example. I think that what it really comes down to is a difference in, you know how I'm always bringing up that time, money, energy illustration, because it's just so, so spot on. I feel like that is, it's true. If you have more time, then you have money. Learn more about skincare, learn more about what ingredients do, what ingredients you can mix, and you can replicate the results of high-end. You may not be able to replicate the textures, but you can get a very good routine on a budget. I chose all of the products in those first two videos because I truly believe that, not because I was settling. But if you don't have a lot of time and you can't afford high-end products, I think you may be happy with them. I will say it is important still to choose the right products for your needs, so so in this video today, I have fewer products, but I'm probably going to explain them a lot more just because they are more costly products. Hopefully that all makes sense. I don't believe that skincare is an exclusionary situation. I think that really everybody can find the right products for them dependent on your budget and your needs. I truly, deeply believe in that. And with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into these products. I did, once again, choose my favorite categories. And for this video, it is serums, mists, and lip balms. What, why is mists hard to say? Mists, it's hard to say. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. I am so ready to share with you serums, and I'm gonna do this a little differently as well. I wanna start by talking about some PM serums just to kind of make it really clear where I put these in my routine. And you know, my number one product I'm going to choose is going to be a retinoid. If you do have acne, again, I truly say, go back to my drugstore video. That is where the best acne care is. But if you are looking for a retinoid that does a little bit more, a little bit more in terms of anti-aging specifically, I actually have to go with the Paula's Choice 1% Retinol Treatment. And even I'm surprised by this because I've been a little skeptical of the Paula's Choice brand over the years, but wow, this is a really good serum. First of all, what I love about this product is that this is 1% pure retinol. There are no games being played here. What I've noticed with retinoid products is that there are a lot of games that other brands like to play. They like to say, you know, oh, a 5% retinol complex, a 10% retinol complex. And I feel like they're just hoping that customers don't notice the word complex. I don't want to say I don't have faith in brands, but I know this is a real thing that happens where, you know, this word complex is used and it's not a direct lie, but it's, it's something that can confuse people. Yes, you can take an ingredient and add another ingredient and add another ingredient and now you have a complex and you can add up the sum of those and call that a percentage complex, right? And the reason why companies might do this is because 1% retinol is the strongest level that you can buy. It is a strong, strong retinol. In fact, if you look through the reviews, you will see people saying that they stopped using it because their skin was peeling, their skin was dry. So you really have to know how to use a retinol to even approach this product. Pea-sized amount, don't start with it every night. Start with it at least on alternating nights, if not less frequently. Because yeah, 1% retinol 
is strong. That is a strong amount, the strongest amount that you can actually buy over the counter. So watch out for all that complex trickery. What I like though is that it's not just 1% retinol, it is, again, as I was saying, these have more things going on in them. This has peptides and vitamin C. I love peptides, those are some of my favorite ingredients. I love vitamin C as well. It's just a, a great anti-aging formula that is more than just retinol. By the way, if you saw that slight yellow color, that's the color of pure retinoic acid. Stronger retinoid products are probably yellow, but don't count on that because sometimes companies include ingredients that are yellow because they know customers are onto that. But if, if there's no dyes or other ingredients adding to the color, that is the color that retinoids should be. Retinoic acid derived retinoids is a, a better phrase to say there. But yeah, it's beautiful. It's so beautiful. It sinks right into your skin. I was kind of torn between this and the Drunk Elephant A Passione, which are about, they're the same in terms of strength, and they're pretty similar in terms of peptides as well, but this is actually less expensive. And I think that even in a high-end video, why not go with the less expensive option? So yeah, this is an incredible product that has a lot going on in it. My other favorite night product has got to go to this dang, I'm mad about this, this Pericone MD Cold Plasma Plus Advanced Serum Concentrate. Now listen, this is, I think, one of the most expensive products in this video, and I really want to explain to you a few things with this. I don't think everybody needs this. Again, this is a serum that has a lot going on with it. It has vitamin C ingredients, it has a lot of lipids, and it has copper tripeptide as well as other peptide ingredients, which does make it a little bit blue. Now, here's the thing. With this one, I think that you are going to really love this if you have skin that is a bit more prone to being irritated. See, because I also deal with acne, and because my skin is often reactive, I think that the copper peptides in conjunction with the lipid ingredients is a really good duo for my skin. I also know I do well with vitamin C. And combining vitamin C and copper peptide in particular can be tricky on its own. Be careful doing that. You don't want to use L ascorbic acid. I suspect the derivatives are okay because Pericone uses them in this product. But, uh, you know, still be careful with that. Copper peptide is kind of a tricky ingredient, but this is the product that I like copper peptide in. Again, I, I don't think it's for everybody. If your skin is pretty robust, I don't think you need this. And at the very least, please know, the Pericone MD brand is a brand you can find in 50% off deals, GMA deals, TJ Maxx. I've seen them on all kinds of sale options. So don't think you ever have to pay $150 for this. Now for AM serums, I have two options here and I'm once again going to say the Doong Inbi. The, there's a few products that have just ended up being in two of these videos. Again, I'm going to say this because I think that ginsenicides in particular are incredible anti-aging ingredients. Suisu is really at the forefront of developing and researching these ginseng based ingredients. But Dunginbi is catching up and their products have a lower price point but seem to be just as effective. This is hard to find, but if you can find it, oh, it is so beautiful. And I also want to include a vitamin C serum. I don't have this one right now because as I just showed you, I have vitamin C in both of my nighttime routine products. But if you do want a vitamin C serum, I am probably going to surprise you with this one. Most recently, I purchased the SkinCeuticals vitamin C but my top pick for vitamin C is going once again to Geek and Gorgeous. That is a pretty affordable product, honestly, at least if you hit the minimum for free shipping, but it is truly the best L ascorbic acid serum I've tried. Better than SkinCeuticals, in my personal opinion. It's almost the same thing, except Geek and Gorgeous makes sure that their formula is always shipped fresh. And that makes a big difference. Again, though, you may not need a separate vitamin C serum. Definitely keep that in mind if you have that ingredient in other steps in your routine. But if you do want a, a separate vitamin C, it really is a great ingredient. Yeah, that's the one I have to go with. For a repairing serum, it is, again, a kind of more affordable product, honestly, but there is just nothing better than the Stradia Liquid Gold. Now, technically, this is a moisturizer, but I treat it like a serum a nighttime serum. Did I just forget to swatch some of these? I think I did. Anyway, let me show you what this looks like. It is bright orange. Look at how stingy I was with that swatch. I love this product. 
I'm out here like, I don't want to waste it. Yeah, it is orange because it is full of sea buckthorn, which is a wonderful restorative ingredient. So you're, you're probably going to want to use it at night, but you see how lightweight it is. That's why I treat this mentally like a serum. There's just really nothing like this for repairing your skin. Now, again, that's, that's what this does. It's a little bit more of a simple formula than some of the first serums I was showing you, but sometimes you just need repair and no more. Nothing beats liquid gold. Nothing beats liquid gold for that. And then finally, a, a serum for acne prone skin. Now, because this is my best of all time, I am once again gonna pull out my Tula and say the Clear It Up Acne Tone Correcting Gel, which again is a gel, but it's also a serum. This is a product with 2% salicylic acid, which is the highest level that is used for the purpose of treating acne, but it also does combine some azelaic acid. It is very possible that when I go to do the best skincare of 2023, it may no longer be this. I am currently using the isomers azelaic acid with 14%, which I talk about in that video right there. But this has been a long running favorite, so I feel I feel I need to include this. At least in a best of all time video. So let me go ahead and show you the texture on this one. It is gel-like, but also serum-like. Sinks into skin nicely, doesn't feel irritating at all. It, sh it shouldn't, it shouldn't. Uh, be careful, you don't wanna overdo salicylic acid. Let's do mists next. I am really excited about this category because in my opinion, these are some of the best mists that give you skincare benefits but also work well with makeup. First one aside, because I do wanna include a toning mist and it, you know, you know it's gonna be the Indie Lee Coenzyme Q10 Toner. I think this is such a great morning toner because it is rich in antioxidants, which is beneficial to pair with your sunscreen. It smells really nice too. It's got quite a nice, kind of more citrus scent to it. Again, to me, this one is a true toner. So this is one I like in the mornings after cleansing. And it is so fun to use. You know, it's your fun mist. It's beautiful. Not gonna use it right now because I'm wearing makeup, but it is a beautiful toner. And you might wanna note that because you could otherwise be flustered by the toner section of this video, maybe. Anyway, then I also have my favorite fine mist, and that's gonna go to the Peach and Lily Glass Skin Veil Mist. This is such a beautiful fine mist, gorgeous for under makeup, for over makeup, full of antioxidants, just the right amount of hydration. Great for refreshing through the day. I'll spray this now so you can see just how fine this mist is. Beautiful. See, it boosts your glow up immediately without disturbing makeup. Wonderful. And then my favorite emollient mist has to go to the Beekman 1802 Milkshake, which I will forever be sad is not actually included in my Beekman trial because I didn't know how good this product was when I went and bought a bunch of Beekman 1802 products. This is the only standing favorite from Beekman 1802. It's ironic. But it's because of all the comments. You all told me, no, this is the best product. You've got to try this one. How right you were, it is gorgeous. Now, what this is going to do, see this layer of oil and then the watery layer here? You mix this up, but you're still going to be spraying oils onto your skin. So it's going to give a whole lot more glow than the Peach and Lily. But also, not too much. Again, it won't disturb makeup. It just will significantly amplify your glow. This has become my default product to use on top of makeup, on top of blush, bronzer, highlighter, but still under a fixing spray. Keep in mind it's different. It won't extend the life of your makeup. It will make your blush look like it's one with your face. Again, you can use it as just skincare, but in particular these two, I think they complement makeup so well. And then let's talk about lip balm. I am just as surprised as you all that I'm saying my favorite lip balms are in the high-end section. But then maybe I'm really not because I've already just talked about these on this channel. The Grande Lips is my favorite plumping lip balm. Nothing compares to it. No in my mind, nothing compares to it. It is a peptide-based plumping lip balm. You won't see results immediately, but you will over time. This one's kind of funny because I, I did say in the intro that the, the textures and the experience of most of these is great. It's not so great with this. It's, it's the results 
for this one. And keep in mind, it's not a heavy and occlusive balm. It is for plumping, so just like I showed you in that video, I do like to pair it with a more occlusive lip balm, and I've got to give this one to Alpen Beauty's Sweet Willow or Sweet Agave and Willow Plumping Lip Mask. Apparently, this one was a really big hit for Alpen Beauty, and I completely see why. It is uh, just emollient enough that it feels like it kind of sinks into your lips and yet it also stays on the surface offering the benefits of an occlusive lip balm it is really really well done and then for my favorite daytime lip balm that honor must go to the kopari lip glossy which i actually think is probably my most repurchased lip balm grande lips is getting up there but this one's been around for a long time and oh it is so perfect for daytime use. This one truly feels very emollient. It does still feel light enough on your lips that it uh, stays on your lips and leaves your lips with a beautiful shine all day long. They also do have some uh, tints, some tinted options, but I just prefer the basic clear one. Uh, I would say this feels more like the Tower 28 lip balm for reference or lip lip gloss rather, and less like the Fenty, so it's not a really heavy and sticky, it's not sticky at all, but it does, it does stay on your lips impressively well, well, you'll still have to reapply it though. So moving on to cleanser, I am so floored that I've managed to have a lot of favorite cleansers. It's funny because I also feel like I'm really picky with cleansers. Somehow I've pulled out a lot of favorites. I've done it. I, I'm, it's an accomplishment. I failed to give my, my little disclaimer about how skin type probably plays into preferences, but you all saw that already. Hopefully you know I do have a, a dry and somewhat sensitive skin type, so that's probably a factor in my favorites here. Anyway, let's get into my favorite cleansers. So for my favorite gel cleanser, I am again going to go with the Fresh Soy Face Cleanser. I feel like this is... It, it's an oldie but a goodie. It is a great gentle cleanser. I feel like this is one of the most neutral cleansing options that I could possibly come up with. And it is so gentle, so wonderful. If you are very sensitive, oh, this one is great. The only thing you might not like is that it does smell like cucumber. I feel it's funny that cucumber is kind of a polarizing scent. It's also my least favorite vegetable. A, a, a random fact for you. Yeah, when I go to Subway, I ask for all of the veggies except for cucumber and pickles. Just, it's just not my favorite. It does foam up a little, hopefully you can see that. My favorite exfoliator, I've, I've gotta go with the Tatcha, the rice wash. I think the reason I like this so much is that it's an exfoliating cleanser, but oh my goodness, it is so gentle. And I feel like as somebody with a little bit more of a sensitive skin type who doesn't use a lot of AHA ingredient or products, I feel like I'm constantly saying not all exfoliants are the same thing, and this product just perfectly conveys that. I know a lot of people really love Tatcha. For me, it is the, the cleansers that stood out in my mind. I think they're, they do a really good job on cleansers, and this is a fantastic, gentle exfoliant. For a foaming face wash, once again, I'm going to go with the Tula Keep It Clear, which, once again, it is this type of foaming cleanser. I have a clear favorite, a clear preference in foaming cleansers. Now again, this is made for acne. It does contain 2% salicylic acid, will be a little bit more gentle, most likely, you will notice, in a, a cleanser than in a leave-on product, but it's so fun to use. Really great, if, if salicylic acid works well for you, I think you'll really love that cleanser. And I did manage to choose a powder cleanser. I'm patting myself on the back for this because it, it was really hard for me to choose. There's a lot of really nice high-end powder cleansers. Ultimately, I'm going with the Dermalogica Daily Milk Foliant. This is a new release from Dermalogica, but I think they did a great job on it. This is made to be even more gentle than their original exfoliant, which I think is a, a very welcome addition for those of us that do have more sensitive skin. It's actually made with oats. And I want to make sure I say something really important with this category. I think a lot of people might uh, believe that you are supposed to add just a little bit of water. You're actually supposed to add a good amount so that you kind of get a bit more of a, almost a, a foaming cleanser in the end. You want to make sure to add your water and then really, really whip it. Whip it good. 
because the way these products work isn't as a physical exfoliant. If you want a physical exfoliant, go with something like the Tatcha Rice Wash. These are enzymatic exfoliators. It is not actually supposed to have little granules left behind, which is, I think that's why I like the high-end category. I do feel like some of the more affordable ones, uh, including the Good Molecules Pineapple Exfoliant, it's just really hard to get a perfect whip to that cleanser. But yeah, this one really surprised me. I did not think it was going to make my best of list, but I just kept using this recently, and I found myself going, I, I love the fact that it is those enzymes for very gentle exfoliation and also oats. It's a, it's a great formula. My favorite cream cleanser is also new. This is also a newer release. I feel like what's going on is, in this video in particular, you know how I said it's all about formulation, it's all about uh, the latest science. That is what you're paying for with high end. And I feel like some brands really came through with that this year, including Alpen Beauty. This June Berry and Collagen Hydrating Cream Cleanser is such an absolute joy to use. I was so worried that this would be uh, too cooling on my skin because it does have cooling ingredients. But again, I'm, I'm thinking they spent a lot of time on this formulation to make sure that it is just the right amount, not too much for those of us who don't like that sensation. But if you do, you get a hint of it with this product. It cleanses your skin thoroughly. You actually get a little bit of physical exfoliation as well. It is so beautiful. I don't know how they did this one. And then finally, for my favorite balm cleanser, this one will not surprise you at all. This is an oldie but a goodie, the Elemis Cleansing Balm. This one is the original, which I think smells great if you like the smell of essential oils. Now, again, that doesn't work for everybody, but what I really appreciate about Elemis is they actually released a completely fragrance-free option. There's also other uh, scents. I know they had a limited edition summer scent. It's a, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> They're, the Elemis cleansers are really fun and enjoyable. And it's another good example of what makes a product make it into this video, even though I think that the Beauty of Joseon cleansing balm from our K-Beauty video is just as effective at removing makeup. There's something about the full experience of this one. So we are moving on to a toner, and I feel like some of you may be mad at me for this, so before I show you the one toner, the one toner that I have selected. Remember, I do have a toner in the mist section as well. But as far as actual toners, there can only be one. There's just nothing like SK2. I am so upset that I know this now because it is such an expensive product, but oh my gosh, there's nothing like it. Now listen, I, again, I really wanna make sure to explain why am I sitting here saying this SK2 product is the, the best toner of all time? It's just the best, it's worth it. Why am I saying that? Well, because in my opinion, I've never encountered a toner that so efficiently evens out your skin tone. And let me be clear here, I have summarized this to the best of my ability. I truly feel that is the strength of this toner. I've never encountered a toner, if not a product, that simply evens out your skin tone as well as this without having any kind of actives where you really need to watch how you use it, what you pair it with. It is such a gentle and somehow incredibly effective product for evening skin tone. Really keep that in mind because not every person has that as a skin concern. Not every person has uneven skin. One other thing I wanna make sure to say with this, because it is not an active product, it is a fermented product instead, I would definitely recommend that you get a small size of this and stick with it for a long period of time. And also, as I said in my SK2 video, take before and after pictures because it's, it's very gentle. It's not the fastest transformation, but when you see it, you can't unsee it. And so there's nothing like it. There's nothing like it, even though, again, super simple ingredients list, it makes you wonder what, what is so special about this. But I really think what it is, it's like that Backstreet Boys song, the formulators must have spent a little more time on you. That's the song, right? I truly think they spent a lot of time figuring out exactly what type of Galactomyces ferment filtrate to use in this product. You know, again, that's a genus. It's not talking about this species. So yeah, that's how you can end up with two products that look like they have the same exact ingredients list and yet one 
just blows your mind and you, you can't you, you can't come back from it, you can't recover, you can never forget how good of a product this was. <sighs> oh yeah, they also have some fun, cute, limited edition packaging if you ever want to try one of these. I have managed to keep our eye cream section pretty simple for this video, more simple in the end than I started out with. I decided that I do have a favorite eye cream in the high-end category, and it is a brightening eye cream. If you saw the best of K-Beauty, I really think K-Beauty does a great job on eye creams, but I do admit to you that I like the Western brightening eye creams. I think that it is nice to have just a little bit of color correction, a little bit of pigment in there, and yes, it's a cosmetic effect, but it is great for instant gratification. And for this, it's another newbie that came through and in my opinion just knocked it out of the park and it is the Glow Recipe Guava Vitamin C. This is such a good and yet really not expensive eye cream. And it's got just enough of this pink color to it that it offers very gentle color correction. Vitamin C, your brightening licorice ingredients, a little bit of caffeine. It is an all-in-one that is just so good and genuinely $4 more than drugstore options. I do have an eye serum for this video, and it is again one of these products where it's a little pricey, but oh my gosh, it will last you for such a long time. You use the tiniest amount of eye serum, and it turns out that 0.5 fluid ounces of eye serum can easily last you an entire year. This is the Dr. Dennis Gross Triple Correction Eye Serum with retinol, with ferulic acid. If you are noticing that you, you just feel like your eye cream isn't giving you enough, you may want to try layering an eye serum under that. And at this point, with how long this product has been lasting me, you use about this amount. Okay, hopefully you can see it. With how long this is lasting, I don't even think this is expensive anymore. It just, it goes on and on and on. It's a bottomless pit of eye serum that is incredibly effective, again, for a lot of different purposes. Smoothing, brightening. And again, that's all what you're supposed to be paying for, in my opinion, with high end, is for a lot to be going on. And... Both of these products accomplish that. I will really quickly mention some eye patches. I don't have either of these right now, but they are really nice if you don't want to do what I showed in that advanced skincare video where I talked about how I use an eye serum like that one underneath other patches. And these two would be the Skin Iceland patches for smoothing and the Bolden patches for brightening. Moisturizer. I'm actually really excited for the moisturizer section in this video because, oh, oh, these are good. For my lightweight pick, and again, keeping in mind that I do have dry skin, I am going with the Peace Out Repairing Moisturizer. This has phenomenal ingredients, and honestly, again, this video is high end, but it's $28. It kind of is honestly less than a lot of drugstore moisturizers, and yet it is so incredible. Bacuchiol, ceramides, Coenzyme Q10, a wonderful antioxidant. This one did have kind of an identity crisis when it first came out. I remember the Sephora website said that it is for dry skin. The packaging says it's a clarifying moisturizer for oily and blemish pr prone skin. But I think the reason for the confusion is because it kind of is both. It truly is lightweight enough that it just sinks into your skin. I really think even if you have oily and blemish prone skin, you will like the feel of this. And yet it really is such a soothing and repairing moisturizer. So if you do have dry skin, which tends to, I suspect, need repair a little bit more than oily skin just because of the lack of oils. I think you'll still really like it. It is a very well done moisturizer. Tip for you with Peace Out. Buy the Peace Out brand through the Peace Out website. They run all kinds of 30% off deals. They have a great reward system. I will never again buy this brand through Sephora. For my medium weight moisturizer, I am going with the Edom Cloud Cushion Airy Brightening Moisturizer, which is such a breakthrough formula. This one is a brightening moisturizer, but it's doing that without, again, those uh, types of actives where you have to be cautious what you pair it with, you can overdo it, you can irritate your skin. Instead, this is a peptide-based formula that, again, this peptide has been tested to work on all skin tones, which was a very important aspect of it for the Edom company. And then for my favorite heavy moisturizer, I don't know if that's the right word for this, but I ultimately have to go with the Kopari Moisture Whipped Ceramide Cream because this is a moisturizer that is very thick 
and nourishing, but also somehow not heavy. I don't know how they did it. It's, it's truly, I think it's that it's a whipped texture. Oh, it is so gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous to use. Let me go ahead and show you how this one blends out, although I'm getting an accumulation of moisturizer on my hand now. <laughs> It's as if it's thick, as if you, you still will feel this one on your skin, but it spreads really nicely. I think, I think that's what I'm trying to describe. <laughs> and again, more than just one aspect of all of these products, we've got, I've actually got two repairing products here and then a, a brightening formula. The Kopari is reparative through the ceramide content. I want to include one more moisturizer in this video though, and that is going to be a priming moisturizer, something that is just beautiful under makeup. And for this, I have to throw it back. I have to throw it back to the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base. It's been around for a while. It's a classic for a reason. I'm gonna swatch it on this hand this time. <laughs> spread so nicely. This one does have fragrance to it. It's really funny. Uh, way back in the day, I said that this had a light scent to it, but as I've gravitated towards more fragrance-free options, it now smells strongly of citrus to me. Funny how that can happen, but it is absolutely gorgeous. I will tell you it is possible that uh, before we do the best skincare of 2023, I might end up saying the Euphoria Primer is my new favorite, but this one really is. It's a classic for a reason. I have managed to trim down the mask section in this video to a mere two products that I truly believe cover just about everything. Aside from clay masks, don't overspin on clay masks. They're clay. You can, you can go inexpensive. I have an exfoliating and clarifying pick for you. And I must tell you, it is technically a peel. And now you know what it is? You know what it is. Goodness, it's a long, long running favorite because it's that good of a product. The Dr. Dennis Gross Alpha Beta Extra Strength Daily Peel. Now this is a product that contains AHA ingredients, it contains retinol ingredients, it contains vitamin C ingredients. I don't know how they crammed so much into this, but I can tell you, wow, it is effective. It is a quick two minute wipe on, wipe off. <laughs> oh, I'm thinking of the, the clap on thing. That's what I, yeah, that's what I was thinking of, okay. <laughs> They say that this is for oily skin or imperfections, uneven tone or texture, wrinkles or enlarged pores, and it really is actually for all of those things. Again, you know, it's expensive. But what you are paying for with this is for whatever incredible art form of formulation took place here to combine all of these ingredients into something that works. And it's typically not too irritating. Now that said, I don't use this very much anymore because I do use a strong retinoid these days. But back when I was using retinol, this was great for me. Great, incredible. A very, very effective product. And then for hydrating and for anti-aging, once again, Suasu comes through the Overnight Revitalizing Mask. Again, we talked about this in the K-Beauty video because I just have to feature it in two of these videos. It is that incredible of a product. This just, I'm telling you, you go to bed with this on either over moisturizer or on its own, whichever works better for you. I like it over moisturizer. And your skin will be so glowing and so hydrated in the morning. And again, it's really funny because it has this long ingredients list of all of these plant-based ingredients. And you would look at it trying to find the actives and go, well, what's actively happening here? Sure, there's plant ingredients. I think, again, it's just the incredible formulation. It really comes together. And then finally, my favorite sunscreens. Now we already went through my favorite sunscreens in the K-Beauty video, but I am gonna pick some for today's video. This first one is really hard for me because I spent a lot of time trying to decide on a favorite mineral sunscreen. And I think in the end, I have to swallow my pride and give it to Tatcha. The Silk Sunscreen is a really, really good all mineral sunscreen where it, they actually disclose the UV protection, UVA protection as well as UVB with this one. It is, it is absolutely gorgeous. It is also really expensive. And I think that's the, the problem that I have with this is that I think that I don't want the best sunscreen to be something that is so expensive because that to me does feel kind of exclusionary. 
But I also got to be honest with myself, right? Isn't that the point of this whole series? So yeah, it is absolutely gorgeous. Please don't buy this if you can't afford it though. Again, see my K-Beauty video. Yes, those are chemical sunscreens, but they are incredible and they are much more gentle than the chemical filters that we use in the US. So it's gorgeous, but it's expensive. It's, it's expensive. And I just worry that in the quest for people finding the best mineral sunscreen, don't underapply. Do not underapply sunscreen. It is really the most important skincare step you can possibly do. So make sure you are doing it right. My favorite tinted sunscreen, I will include this in this video, and that is the Tower 28. Honestly, it's the only tinted sunscreen that I've ever actually seen done correctly. They have a very vast shade range, and that's the only way you can do this. You can't do this, you know, two shades thing. It's just not enough. It is truly a sunscreen where you can apply a lot of product and it actually does buff into your skin really nicely. It will be slightly drying because it is mineral filters, but it's not too bad. It's not too bad. I think it's a really well done product, honestly. I'm not sure why this didn't quite get the recognition that I really thought it would. I guess it might just be that it is an SPF of 30, but again, you know, know the SPF level that is appropriate for you. There are days where I choose an SPF of 30 because I know I'm not gonna see much sun. If you're in the sun all day, not enough. Not enough for you, go with an SPF of 50. And then I will include a hybrid sunscreen into this video. And for that, I am gonna go with the Dermatology. This one uses zinc oxide as well as octanoxate. And it, it does actually say it's a universal tint, but uh, it's also octanoxate, so it's a little bit more flexible. Now, honestly, this is a really, really nice sunscreen. I know this is a holy grail for a lot of people, and I really do understand why. Octanoxate, by the way, is one of the more gentle chemical filters. On the subject of octanoxate, I know it can be a little tricky. I would say don't make this your beach sunscreen, also obviously, because you're gonna wanna choose a waterproof sunscreen. Um, but I think that for day-to-day -day use, I think it's great. It really does buff in and it is, it's actually beautiful. And my friends, that's it. That's it for the entire series. We have come to the end. Thank you all so much for watching and let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you have any favorites. Let me know what you think of these products. Let me know if you enjoyed this series. We switched up the way we do the best of for, I think every year I've had this channel, right? I think so. So let me know if you enjoyed this year's and that's it. Thank you again so much for watching. Do make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. I hope you all have a wonderful week and I will see you all next time.